All right, so previously we've looked at how energy and conservation of energy can be done and represented by pie charts, where a pie represents 100% of the energy, and then we dictate what type of energy is there qualitatively, and we make our pies like so, okay? Um, what I want to do now, or, you know, there's another way to represent it, and that it is actually by using um, bar graphs. Okay, so we can create energy bar graphs as well where we represent the energy present at any given point like we did with the pies, okay, except we use bar charts to do it. Um, you can do it a couple ways. You can actually use numbers when the total number of energy or amount of energy is provided or solvable. Um, otherwise, you know, you can look at it in terms of percent percentages. So 100%, here's 50%. 75% and 25%. Again, how you represent it is honestly up to you. Um, you just need to take into consideration the types of energy present, okay, and the types of energy lost or so forth. So, uh, for example, you know, this I believe was from when we were looking at the guy that was on the human slingshot. And so at the end, he was, you know, elastic potential was high, gravitational potential was some, but at the end, he lost half his energy or most of his energy had some gravitational potential and elastic potential. So if I were to translate this to a bar graph, okay, I would show that half of my energy was dissipated. I would show a quarter of my energy was stored in elastic potential. And then I would also show that a quarter of my energy was stored in gravitational potential. Okay. Now, just like we've done in the past, energy has to be conserved. So these three energies have to add up to my 100% my energy. And again, if I do so, if I take these and I add them up, I have half of my energy as my total energy. I have a quarter of my energy as this elastic potential energy. And then that last portion of the energy present is my gravitational potential, all adding up to a total of 100%. Okay, so this is just showing you that energy is conserved, and this plus this plus this is equal to the total energy present. Here's another good example of conservation of energy. So I have some masses and some springs, and as you stretch the spring, you can notice that there is gravitational potential, there's elastic or EEL as we call it, and then there's kinetic energy. And so I'm gonna hang this mass on the spring, and I'm gonna let it go, Okay, I'm going to slow it down to a quarter of the speed just to illustrate my point. But while it's moving, it has some kinetic energy, okay? When it's real high up at the top, like here, it has the most gravitational potential, and then it has some elastic potential. As you run this, okay, like at the bottom, all of the kinetic goes away because it's stopping and turning around. It has a ton of elastic potential because this is stretched, and it has um, gravitational potential because it still is the distance off of the ground. But notice how this plus this is equal to this here. Again, if we play it, you'll notice when we have kinetic, oops, I didn't want to have that. Stop it. Here, for example, we have our kinetic plus our gravitational plus our elastic all adding up because energy is conserved. Okay. Now, what I really want to do is I want to take you guys and show you how this relates to a problem. So here's an example problem, and I know we've looked at this type of problem in terms of um, roller coasters before. So this is another one, but we're going to look at it and we're going to use this type of problem to illustrate how we use bar graphs or bar charts for um, energies and conservation of energy. So consider the diagram below, uh, an object goes down this track and then hits a spring at the end, slows to a stop. Now, it tells us that it's frictionless, which when we're told that, that means E dis is equal to zero, okay? We don't lose energy if it's frictionless, 
Okay, so it comes to a stop at a compression at point D. It tells us at the beginning it has 7,350 joules of potential energy. We just need to figure out the energies at these different points. Okay, so before I even get to my bar graph, I'm just going to work through and figure out what exactly each energy is at these points, like we did for the roller coaster previously. So at point A, I know that E total is equal to 7,350 joules. I know that it's at rest at the top, so EK is equal to zero, it's not present. Um, EEL, there's no spring there. So all of the energy here is EG, 7,350 joules. So um, I know that amount. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a value here. In. I'm just going to say that that mark right there represents 7,350 joules. That's 100%. And all of my energy there is gravitational. Now, even if you're not provided, sometimes it's useful to have an energy total column just to help remind us that, again, no matter what happens, energy is conserved, and we know that all of this energy that we have, that we start with, we should have at the end, okay? Just like in the roller coaster, we showed that no matter what, the total mechanical energy, the total energy in the system stays constant, energy is conserved. So we can use that part of information to know that at B, C, and D, as well as A, the total energy is going to be 7,350. So we can just move forward and we can go to B, C, and D like we did for the roller coaster. So for B, I look and right away I see that it is at 10 meters high and it's a 25 kilogram cart. So I'm gonna figure out EG first. Okay, knowing that it's M, G, H, mass is 25, gravity is 9.8, the height there is 10. So I know then that E, G should end up equaling uh, 2,450 joules. Okay, um, I also look at this point Okay, and at B there is no spring, so I can rule out elastic potential, which means the rest of the energy that it got from here, and as it's traveling down, it's speeding up, it's moving pretty fast, it has kinetic energy there, and I know that E total is equal to EG plus EK. So I'm gonna write that down. And I can figure out what my kinetic energy then is based off of the fact that I know my E total is the same throughout, 7, 3, 5, 0 is equal to my EG, which we had to be 2450 plus EK. Subtract 2450 to both sides, EK should end up being 4,900 joules. Okay, so I have both of my numbers there. Uh, point C, well this one's pretty easy, okay, it's all the way down to the bottom, it's at ground level, so there is no, whoops, wrong, wrong one, there is no EG there, okay, this should still say EG because there is some there, there is no EG at point C, it's at the bottom, okay, I look, no spring, so that means the EK in this case is also all 3750 for that situation. And then the last one, point D, it's compressed. I know the EK is zero. It tells us it gets compressed, so it stops. So EK is zero. EG, well, it's back to 10 meters high. And we figured out that when it's 10 meters high at point B, it has 2450. So at this point, it also, EG, should be the same, which is 2450 joules. And then EEL is the remainder. So EEL, well, we can't figure that out without doing some math. So knowing total energy here should be EG plus EEL because those are the two energies present. I can go ahead and I can substitute values in that I know to solve for that. E total we know is 7,350 because energy is conserved. 
should be equal to EG, which we solved to be 2450 plus EEL. So I know then that EEL, using some simple algebra, should be 4,900 joules. Okay, so it's usually pretty simple um, to figure out how to scale this. Now, I already know that basically this number here, 2450, is one third, but you really can scale this however you want, so long that the values you're looking for are labeled on the graph. Okay, some people like to show their graphs as an approximation and then like actually highlight what they are. However you do that is up to you, but I'm just gonna show that no matter what, when it's at that height, it's 3750. When it's at the middle one, it's gonna be 4900 joules, and this lowest one here is gonna represent our 2450. Okay, and so EK and EG at point B are present. So EK we figured out to be 4,900, so I'm going to draw a bar under that to show 4,900. And then EG we figured out to be 2,400, so I'm going to show that bar, because again this line here represents 2,400. Um, this one we already did, we figured out that the total energy is the kinetic energy, which is 7,350. And then the last one, again, we just have to graph our numbers. EK is zero because it's not moving at point D. EG, we know it's 10 meters off the ground, which means that it has to be 2450. So I'm going to go ahead and make that mark there. And then EEL, well, that's the remainder of it, which, by the way that I've scaled my chart, represents 4,900, which is what we solved for. So this is another representation of using bar graphs to show conservation of energy. Again, lastly, I do have to point out that we were able to make all these assumptions because we said that it's a frictionless track and that the energy dissipated for this circumstance is zero. Again, that's bar graphs to show conservation of energy.